Welcome to our tutorial on creating stock inventory items. This video will familiarize you with the various features of Inventory Entry screen. We'll begin by selecting Inventory Entry from the Inventory menu. To search for an existing item, you can click the drop-down arrow within the Part Number field. This will activate the Inventory Search screen where you can search through a list of pre-existing items. To enter a new item, simply begin typing in your new part number. You will also need to enter a description. The description of a part is what your customer will see when you add an item to the invoice. You will also want to keep your part descriptions short and to the point, so you can search for a part by that description in the future. Next, you will select your part type. Your type will be stock, serial, or assembly. For this example, we'll use stock. Your part also requires a category and subcategory. If the particular category that you need is not available, you can add it by clicking the category link to the left. For further information on setting up categories and subcategories, please see our video on inventory setup. The fields on the left side of the screen are for tracking your costs. These control costs, and vicariously your pricing, of your items. These fields are covered in detail in a later lesson. On this side, you will also see the Buy-Sell Ratio feature, which allows you to divide your costs by the amount of quantity you receive. You'll also see the SPIFs feature, which allows you to reward your technicians monetarily for items that they have sold. In the center, you'll see markup codes, and we'll cover how they affect pricing in a later video. At the bottom of this section, you'll also see the price book feature, which allows you to choose which price book this item is saved to. The Post to Equipment feature gives you the ability to track certain parts or units once they are sold to a customer. If Post to Equipment is set to Yes, then adding the item to an invoice will automatically add the item to the customer's equipment record when the invoice is saved. Similar to the Post to Equipment option is the Post to History option. This creates an entry in the customer's history log rather than their equipment records. You can even select the history code that the item will post with if you don't want it to use the part number. You can also control which accounts are affected by the sale of an inventory item. By default, these are controlled by the System Accounts tab of your System Setup screen. The Income account will remain blank unless you specify an account. This way, the Income account will be determined per invoice rather than by the part itself. The Manufacturers tab is not a requirement, but can definitely be used to your benefit, especially when the item is set to post to equipment. When the item posts to the customer's equipment record, it will take the manufacturer information along with it. You can also use the manufacturer's information, the name, model, and type, as a means of searching for inventory items. Next, we have the Quantity and Location tab. Here you can enter a warehouse, aisle, and bin where you keep the item stored. This will help you locate the item quickly and easily. Also here you have fields for minimum and maximum quantity. These allow you to easily reorder parts when your warehouses get low. We'll be covering this process in a later video. You can use the Notes tab to take notes on this part, and the Quantity and Stock tab will show you how many of this part you have available and in what warehouse it is being kept. This may come in handy when you need a part now and don't have time to order it. Finally, the Vendors tab will allow you to keep track of the order history for a particular item. This tab will automatically track vendors that you have ordered from, when the item was last purchased, and how much you paid. You can also use this tab to enter the part number that your vendor uses for this item. This comes in handy when scanning barcodes or when placing the item on a purchase order. We'll cover those procedures in another lesson. Once you have all the information filled out for this part, click the Save button on your toolbar. You have now created a stock part for your inventory list. See our other videos for more advanced options and settings.